This is Vern Benham Grimsley with the Spiritual Renaissance Broadcast. The most renowned historian of this century, Professor Arnold Toynbee, once wrote in the London Observer, and I quote, Up till now, nearly all human beings have divided their fellow human beings into two groups, a minority group who are our kith and kin, and a majority group who are outsiders, aliens, potential enemies. Our double standard of conduct has always been immoral and odious, but in the past it has perhaps been inevitable. But the economic and social conditions that originally created the double standard are now obsolete. Modern technology has annihilated distance. It has brought all human beings all over the face of the earth into direct contact with each other for weal or for woe. Is it possible to break the habit of meeting out differential treatment to kin and to outsiders? Granted that, under atomic age conditions, persistence in this habit spells destruction. Is it within our power to break loose from this pernicious habit's grip? Yes, it is, answers Professor Arnold Toynbee, the historian. We know it is, listen to this, because this has been demonstrated by the prophets of the missionary religions. The Buddha broke through the barrier of caste and preached his way of release to all living creatures without distinction. Jesus is reported to have declared that whosoever shall do the will of my father, the same is my brother and sister and mother. Now that it has become a matter of life and death as well, we cannot plead that to treat all humanity as our kin is something beyond our human powers, writes Professor Toynbee. The same immoral habit of drawing a distinction between kin and aliens has also been poisoning the relations between different physical races. The differences of physique that distinguish one race from another do not carry with them any correspondingly spiritual difference. And it is the spiritual, not the physical side of human nature, that is humanity's distinguishing mark. End of quotation. Here was the world's most famous influential historian of our generation, Professor Arnold Toynbee, pleading for a vision of all mankind as one vast family and summarizing his argument with the observation that, quote, it is the spiritual, not the physical side of human nature, that is humanity's distinguishing mark. He quoted both Buddha and Jesus as holding forth the hope that on a spiritual basis, mankind can and will be united. In truth, there is dawning in our day a spiritual renaissance, which one day is going to make more differences in this world the way this world is than any war which has ever been waged, any battle which has ever been fought, any governmental, political, social, economic upheaval or transaction in all the centuries of human history. And you, if you will, may be part of that spiritual renaissance. How? Because it can begin in your life. How can you hope for the world to get better unless you do? How can you expect or hypothesize that the world could live in peace and goodwill unless the individual human beings who constitute the population of this world themselves began to live in peace and goodwill. A transformed world begins with transformed individuals. The very idea of a planet living in harmony, a planet living in peace and productivity, while at the same time all the individual human beings on that planet were at each other's throats in hostility, vengeance and aggression would be sheer and blatant contradiction. A changed world begins with changed individuals and on the personal specific level it means it begins with you. That you can discover spiritual energies for the living of your life which can transform your life and ultimately the world itself because there's a plan for this planet and a purpose for your individual life. You are Believe it or not, and that's your alternative, but you are a son or daughter of the living God. You say, what is that? A statement of analogy, poetry? That says something so fundamental about your nature, about your inherent constituent being, that you are more than a physical, physiological, biochemical creation. There's a fragment of infinity indwelling your mortal mind. The kingdom of God is within you. There is a spark of the divine which is part of you, and by faith you can find and begin to live the will of God for your life, which is the supreme adventure of time and of eternity. You can find that by faith, and faith is part persistence. The hero, wrote Ralph Waldo Emerson, is no braver than an ordinary man, but he is brave five minutes longer. 
One social worker, laboring with the poor, has written, when nothing seems to help... When I become discouraged, I go and look at a stonecutter hammering away at his rock, perhaps a hundred times without as much as a crack showing in it. Yet at the hundred and first blow, it will split in two. And I know it was not that blow that did it, but all that had gone before. Faith is part persistence. It is the undiscouraged commitment of your life, of your energies, your mind... To the supreme, to the ultimate, to the absolute. Is the absolute obsolete? You can discover the contrary in your personal experience because you can know God, not merely know about God, not merely hold some intellectual, theoretical, theological creeds, but in your day-by-day -day experience live in transaction, interaction with God, knowing God, sharing your inner life with God, loving and worshiping God, and the love of God and man were Jesus two great commandments. Once Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven is like some treasure which has been buried in a field. A man finds it and buries it again and goes off overjoyed to sell all his possessions to buy himself that field. Or again, he said, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant searching for fine pearls. When he has found a single pearl of great value, he goes and sells all his possessions and buys that one pearl. Spiritual truth is the greatest possession you can have. And to be quite explicit about it, you do not possess truth. Truth possesses you when you give your life to the living God who gave you your life in the first place. You begin to discover what life is all about and what, furthermore, you yourself are all about. Who are you? What are you? What is the nature of man? Aristotle, the ancient Greek philosopher, defined man as the rational animal. For man is clearly more than merely an animal. Man alone is able to survive from the steaming equatorial jungles to the frozen Arctic wastelands of the north. Man alone is capable of making and using intricate tools, drilling and mining for minerals, launching satellites, constructing skyscrapers, walking on the surface of the moon. Man has delved into art, philosophy, science, religion... By means of broadcasting, as at this very moment, man is capable of sending his thoughts flashing through space in but a scintilla of a second. Man is able to perform complex logical reasoning. No animal can do that. And yet, man simultaneously is the only creature who slaughters millions of his own kind in global warfare. Man is of the genus Homo and the species Sapiens. Homo sapiens, which means wise man. Or would it be more correct to describe man as the creature capable of wisdom? World history compellingly indicates that only a few human beings, a relative few, have in fact attained to that wisdom of which man is capable. That high spiritual attainment of living as sons of God, as children of the cosmos, in understanding, peace, purpose, joy, goodwill. The average anthropoid ape possesses a lifespan of only 35 years. Man's lifespan is double that. But whether man's greater length of life is equaled by a greater depth of life is seriously to be questioned when so many of mankind seem consumed in strictly materialistic pursuits. Human beings create homes and families necessitated in part by the fact that man's infancy and childhood, the years of growing up, consume approximately one-fifth of his lifetime. The family is, in fact, the basis of human civilization. And 2,000 years ago, there lived a son of a carpenter who taught that all this starry universe itself is one vast family, the brotherhood of beings beneath the sovereign fatherhood of God. Man is able to learn by reasoning from observation, induction, deduction, and the drawing of conclusions. Animals may be trained by repeated conditioning, but the majority of their activity is on the instinctive rather than rational level. And yet, there is more to man than his reason. There's a spiritual dimension to human experience as well. The brain of man is approximately three times heavier in weight than the brain of a gorilla. And your forebrain of your cerebrum, which is involved in will, intelligence, memory, creativity, is much more intricately developed than the cerebrum of any animal. Still, is man's art, religion, philosophy, love, goodness, unselfishness, all of this adequately accounted for simply in the fact that man's cerebrum is larger than the apes, 
Or might there not be another explanation? That as one Jesus of Nazareth declared it, the kingdom of God is within you. Certainly, in many ways, man is like an animal. His eyesight is as good as the eyesight of the average animal, but his sense of smell is far inferior. We walk on our hind legs and possess opposable thumbs, enabling us to use our hands more proficiently. Through science and medicine, we have extended our span of time upon this earth. 200 years ago, man's average life expectancy came to approximately 35 years, about the same as any anthropoid ape. But during these past 200 years, the average life expectancy has increased to around 70. But the question is this, what are you doing? What are you doing with your life? Here you are, the very royalty of this earth, you personally wearing the crown of creation, rational intelligence, possessed of countless advantages over the animals of the realm, a larger brain, tool-making ability, environmental and climatic adaptability, and twice the lifespan of the apes. And what are you doing with it? Are you so much as beginning to live up to your full potential, even as the highest of animals, much less as a child of the infinite? Are you so much as utilizing your physical possibilities, much less your spiritual ones? There is more to you than you perhaps have ever before considered, for a flame within you is a burning spiritual awareness which will never permit you to rest in contentment, living only as an animal. For physical gratifications alone, you are a child of the infinite, a son or daughter of the living God, you personally. And as long as you deny your essentially spiritual nature, you will live in ceaseless restlessness. Until man finds God, he is the loneliest of beings on this earth. There is an inner echoing and emptiness of soul which can never be filled by any less than spiritual experiences. Your loneliness of soul is for the living God, who loves you illimitably, and who calls you to the eternal quest of the exploit of his will and purposes for you, and from the day you give yourself to that, you have become more than you were, more than an animal born to live and die to earth alone, but a child of eternity, born to live beyond the stars of time and space, the son or daughter of the living God, whom you were born to be. If you're interested in these topics, write to us. We want to hear from you at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644. That's the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, or abbreviated SRI. For those of you listening in other countries around the world, over our international satellite and shortwave network, let me spell the mailing address. SRI, Box 3080, Oakhurst, O-A-K-H-U-R-S-T, California, C-A-L-I-F-O-R-N-I-A, 93644, United States of America. I've written Finding God, Getting to Know God, Seven Principles of Prayer, Life After Death, What Does Happen When You Die? If you're interested in these topics, no cost, no charge, no obligation, nobody's going to come to your door with an attache case and try to sell you something. Simply write to the Spiritual Renaissance Institute Box, 3080 Oakhurst, California, 93644, USA. This is a non-sectarian, non-profit program proclaiming the dawning spiritual renaissance, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the worldwide family of God. And so for now, this is Vern Benham Grimsley saying, may God's will be done by you. Good day.